my friends, we are going red again. Look up there. And by the way, do you see my amaryllis? They are in their second bloom, four flowers on each little waxed bulb. Absolutely amazing. Now in this video, as you can see, I'm kind of jumping the gun a little bit. Red, what's that for? Valentine's Day. So my mantle will be red for a while until I can access my pewter tubs. Now there's a story behind all this. And as all of you know, or most of you, a lot of my stuff, my treasures, are out in the shed in yellow tubs supposedly organized according to accessibility. Uh-uh, tried to get to the pewter. It's way down on the bottom under four other tubs. So we need to do some reorganizing. And until I can get some pewter up here and some other things, we're going red. I also have my snow painting up and some roses and a few other things. So I had to go red again. You know, as we do these videos, I, I do them sort of in two or three minute clips. Sometimes I go on and on and it goes to six or seven minutes, but you, you then uh, go over it and then you take it from the camera and put it on your iMovie, which is where I do my editing. And sometimes I look at myself and I look over and I find that I've got too much of a blurb of, of eyeshadow on one eye and I try and fix it and whatever. Well, that just happened to me. I looked at my face from the last clip and I thought, uh-oh, Nanny forgot to do her eyebrows again. And as you know, my eyebrows as well as hair and other things are disappearing as I age. And I still haven't found the right way to do my eyebrows. Um, I've been filling it in with a little eyeshadow because I've lost a lot of uh, eyebrow in the middle, but I've always had, at least when I was younger, I've always had fuller eyebrows, which, which I prefer. I like that kind of hairy look um, and that's just me. So I fixed that a bit. And in the meantime, I realized that I do prefer a, a something on the bottom lashes. Now, all of you know that that's where I boob up also. So what I've done yesterday or the day before, I happened to be on Amazon or somewhere and I saw bottom false lashes. Now I've tried eye, false eyelashes. I just, I just can't be bothered with them. I don't have the time, but I think my problem has always been on the bottom lashes to sort of show up my eyes. And when I try and go over them with mascara, I get too much and it blurs and it, you've all told me it doesn't look good. So I've sent for these, what they call wispy, little, um, it's not individual, it's a, a strip. Uh, I don't know how this, gonna, this is gonna go. It comes with the clear gel to put it on or clear adhesive. And I'm gonna try and see what these little false eyelashes look like. Now, there's a little story behind why I decided to do this. And this is going into a shout out. Okay, now that's a good example of you seeing clip by clip how I make headway or go the other way. Now, in the last clip, I tried to uh, fill in my eyebrows with some eyeshadow and it was a disaster as you saw. So I just took a Kleenex and tried to fix them up. So you're seeing clip by clip how I'm messing up my eye makeup. So this leads to the shout out. Now, like you, I do watch a lot of different um, channels and don't always comment on all of them like many of you do. But um, one of the ones that I watch, not at, not every single one because you know, you, you don't always do the rounds of every one, but quite often is Glitzy Fritzy. And um, maybe a lot of you watch her. Glitzy Fritzy is just, a, I call her a rogue. She is so different, so funny, crazy, and I love crazy. And this big over the top personality, which I also love in people too. 
And I noticed in, Mar her name is Mary, and she does makeup and has been doing it for so long. See, that's the point. So many of these women have, have such great knowledge about skincare and makeup. And I have only started doing this probably in the last three years since I started my YouTube. I always did eyes and a lot of the times I used mascara years ago, it was Vaseline, but I never did the real makeup look with the concealer and the, the bronzers and foundations and everything. But back to Mary or Glitzy. By the way, uh, Mary, my daughter Margie is a Glitzy. She's bling all the way. I was looking at her eyes in the last video that she did, and um, her eye makeup is fantastic, and I love her eyebrows. Her eyebrows are real. She has beautifully shaped eyebrows, and and uh, she has her own hair in there, and, and obviously used some kind of gel, which I want to invest in. And I think I did order some of that, too. But she seems to have very beautiful curly lower lashes and I didn't get a chance to ask her if they were her own. Now I went back and I was started to binge on some of her other um, ones. She She's so funny. She does everything besides makeup too by the way and I love what she does with the hair and the bandanas and everything. I have to get back to doing that. But I didn't always see these wispy lashes stand out so and if they are false, I'd love to know that, Mary. And if not, what do you do to make your lower lashes stand out? Your eyes, your, your makeup is flawless, it's terrific. And I love it. Even with the glasses on, Mary, like me, wears glasses and looks just as beautiful with the glasses on. So ladies, if you want to learn and be entertained by a very clever, funny woman. Go to Glitzy Fritzy's. I'll put the name in a graphic under here. Go to Glitzy Fritzy's channel and just enjoy the heck out of her and learn a lot while you're at it. You know, we don't put heaters on in the daytime here and there is a little chill in here besides it's red and I just love this scarf anyway. So I have this on for a little bit right now. So I think the probably most of the red decor, especially my amaryllis until they die out, but I do have some artificial uh, that are, honestly, you probably couldn't even tell the difference. I've had those for 20 years and they stay out over on this side of the little living room for all year long. But I am ready for Valentine's Day. And I know I'm pushing the subject here, but I've got everything out. In fact, I went through my, sweat, my, my sweater tub I was able to get to this morning. Old sweaters and put all the Christmas sweaters away and checking out, I have a Valentine sweater. My Valentine sweater from Walmart from last year. So I have that ready to go. I have my Valentine's glasses ready to go. I do have my resin heart that Margie gave me and I'm, I'm all set for Valentine's Day. Oh, I even found in my cupboard last year, I didn't have a cup. For Valentine's Day. So what I did was I found my red nail polish and I painted some hearts on a white ceramic cup. You can do that. You know, I was thinking you could even do it on some white plates that you could pick up in, um, in a thrift shop and make some cute Valentine's plates for Valentine's Day. But I know I'm rushing the subject here. So let's just stick to mid-January for a while. Now, I, speaking of, well, not January, but I made a supper last night that I wished I had videoed it during the whole process. It was something so I sort of made up as I went along and it was the result of a craving that I had during the day. 
Somewhere around noontime yesterday, I had a craving for Chinese food, the real stuff, not the stuff from Panda, no, although Moose and I do like, but he particularly likes those, but I'm not wild about their chow mein and, and uh, I do like their orange chicken and some of the spicy uh, chicken and cashew chicken and everything, but we have a favorite Chinese restaurant that we like to go to every once in a while and we just go for it with all the wonderful dishes, the hot dishes, the shrimp dishes, and the chow mein, and just everything. Well, I was craving some sort of a shrimp chow mein. And um, I said to Moose, do you feel like going? He didn't want to go out yesterday. So I said, well, I, he said, bring Panda home. I said, no, nope, that, that won't do it for me. Only if we go to the restaurant. So. In my mind, I dabbled about going down and doing takeout, but that meant, you know, getting in the car and going down there and, and spending a lot of money, by the way. Chinese food, especially when you start picking things and you don't stop, adds up. So I said to myself, okay, what can I make? I had the shrimp. I always have a couple of um, packets of Walmart's colossal and extra large shrimp. It's reasonable and uh, you you get, I don't know, a dozen and a half of, of these great, crunchy, juicy shrimp, big ones, not puny little ones. And I always keep them, and, and by the way, they're very reasonable, definitely under $10, more like $7.99, believe it or not, uh, I think. So I knew I had those, now, I do keep an assortment of pasta on hand because we love it and because Brendan loves my cold pasta. I always like to keep different kinds. And I did not have the Chinese noodles that the recipes called for. So I thought, you know, I do have thin spaghetti. And I looked up and they said, you know what? You can substitute thin spaghetti for chow mein. So I pulled that out. And then I realized that you have a certain amount of vegetables in chow mein. So I found I had a zucchini. I had one big giant carrot left from my split pea soup last week. Um, I had cucumbers. I had onions, red onions and regular. What else did I put in there in the way of veggies? Oh, celery. And so this time, when you're doing a chow mein, you, you slice them the skinny way, the long way. You don't slice them in rounds. So I slivered uh, very thin slivers of carrots, about this long, all of them. Onions, zucchini, cucumber, you name it. I started these off. And I started them, I'm going to tell you how I made it, but then I took one picture only one with a little video and I should have done the whole thing I, near the end. So I put some butter and some sesame oil and I figure, okay, what are the spices you use for Chinese cooking? Sesame oil, which I always keep on hand. I do have sesame seeds and forgot to put those in. That would have been great. I have rice vinegar that I always keep. I have soy sauce. Uh, now I have hoisin sauce and various others, Worcestershire and everything, but I don't particularly like the taste of those. So um, I got all my sauces and everything out and I started sauteing all these slivers of veggies, quite a bit. I mean, it piled up in the bottom of the frying pan and I put some butter in and the sesame oil and it, and it looked great. So in the meantime, I took my thin spaghetti and I uh, cooked the spaghetti in my big pot and I broke it in half instead of the big long ones. So they were still this long, six inches long anyway. And uh, got this sauce going. And then I started putting in soy sauce and more sesame oil. And you know, it's just a matter of keep on trying. Um, if I forgot any things, oh, ginger. I did not have a fresh ginger. Normally I will keep them and garlic. You have to put a lot of garlic in and ginger. So I did have some powdered ginger, which I did use. It's not as strong as it would have been, but I kept putting that in. Moose said, go, go easy on the ginger, but I didn't want to really because ginger helps make it. So I kept putting all this together with the soy sauce, the sesame oil, the ginger, the garlic, something else that I forgot. Oh, 
You could put brown sugar in, but you know it was tasting so good that I didn't do that, or a little honey in with all this. So I made a sauce, but not a lot, because as you know, chow mein just needs to, the noodles need to be coated. So uh, the shrimp that I buy from Walmart is cooked. Sometimes I buy it uncooked, but it's easier for me if I wanna do a fast supper to just buy the cooked. All I have to do is take the tails off. And then I threw the shrimp in and I made sure that I had some ginger on top of the um, shrimp to kind of sink in. And then I put all the shrimp in with all this sauce with the veggies so the shrimp would get coated. And then I started to throw into the pot the pasta when it was cooked. Oh my goodness, it was so delicious. I only used half of the pasta spaghetti, which I'm sorry of, but in the long run, it was probably a healthy bowl anyway. I could have eaten twice the amount. I always say that, and, and I probably could, but fortunately, I did not do it all, so I still have some left. Moosey raved, I raved, and I'm gonna put a picture of the shrimp and the sauce before I put the pasta in. It was a fabulous meal, and I think I might make it again in a couple of days because I have some pasta left as much as went in before. If you like chow mein and shrimp, you ought to try this and it was healthy with all the veggies, and I didn't even have to go out of the house to buy any extra things. I used what I had, and oh, it was such a yummy supper. This was the mixture right before I put the thin spaghetti or chow mein in, mixed it up, put it in a bowl, and we before I go any further, I want to talk about um, something that happened, I think it was the day before yesterday, as I was trying to comment to someone who had just come on to our um, channel and subscribed. Her name is Barbara, and Barbara, if you are watching, I, I want you to listen to what happened to my response as I was commenting to you. Barbara told me that she had just joined our channel and that she and her husband were 85 years old and had been married for 65 and a half years. And that she met her husband when she was 12 years old and they were great friends. I guess she moved away, and then came back, and then they eventually married at 19 or 20. And I, I thought, wow, you know, somebody that's as old as I am, <laughs> And, and married uh, even longer than Moosey and I have been married. So I was commenting to her, and as I got through one or two sentences, it was one of those long ones, um, my iPad went dead on me. The, the charge had gone. I wasn't watching it. And when I plugged it in and recharged again, I went to find Barbara's comment and my comment up to that point, and it was gone. I looked everywhere. I went on um, the YouTube, looked all through the comments. It wasn't there, and I feel terrible about it. So Barbara, uh, that's what happened if you don't see your own comment or my comment. May maybe it did go through, but it's not in, in my records at all. So please comment again and know that I did enjoy very much uh, reading your comment. And by the way, gals, sometimes that happens where uh, you make a comment and it's not there. Uh, I don't um, get rid of any of your comments, please believe me. And I enjoy them all and I know you're all my friends. And Teeny, you, you did something that was unusual too the last video, you inadvertently commented under someone else's comment. And that doesn't always sh show up to me. It will show up on the YouTube, but not to me. But if you, but, but when you told me about it, that it was under Jane's comment, I went back and looked. Anyway, enough of that stuff. So let's get back to what we're gonna talk about today.
So today I wanted to kind of do one of my little updos and I went rooting through my, my little bucket of um, hair accessories. And I do have this braid. Remember when I brought this braid a while ago? I have that and then I also have one of those hair forms that I could have used in the back to curl. It's a big round thing that goes right around the bottom or you could do it on the top. And all I did really to get the poof around my face was um, put some of my dry shampoo in. I just love that stuff. That does give my hair body. But I'll kind of show you what the hairdo looks like. I know it's messy in the back, but you can at least see the braid and you can see what I was trying to do in the back. Probably should have put the form in. Gibson girl hairdos a little bit. But I, I do love the braid, and it's one of the few things that I have found that does match my hair. I have a terrible time trying to match this white hair with, um, it's not gray white, it's, I guess, white white. Although sometimes in this natural light, uh, it almost has that real pale yellow blonde look, which is kind of what I used to be for years. One thing I should be wearing and showing right now, especially in this um, chilly day, I, I have on my my nightshirt, my silk nightshirt, and because it's so red, I love it anyway. That's probably why I'm so cold right now. But remember that beautiful thing that Moosey got for me from that catalog for my birthday. It's that pocket scarf, and I know a couple of you sent for them and ordered them for your mom, some of you younger gals, my daughters. Anybody that's up to, what, 65 could be my daughter, <laughs> because I have kids. I think uh, our oldest is 61 now, and we didn't get married until we, well, I was 22, 22 and a half. So all you gals up to 65 could be my daughters or my granddaughters. I had a sweet gal, here I go, but a sweet gal by the name of Ella, 19 years old, who commented uh, the day before yesterday and made me feel so good. She said, I'm not part of your demographic, Nanny, but I just love to listen to you talk about the old days. And, and she went on and on and I thought, Wow, first of all, that's a young gal with wisdom because when I was her age and for many, many years on, I sought out older women. I mean, women in their really golden years, 70s and 80s, kind of like me. And I, one particular one, after we came home from Scotland, we lived out in the country in New Jersey. And although we had a, a newer type of a farmhouse on two acres, down the road was a woman who was in her 80s and she had one of the original farmhouses on this street. And I think she had 60 acres, but she had a couple of barns in the back. She lived there all by herself. And we used to, well, I used to walk down with the dogs and visit her on days when the kids were in school or I wasn't teaching. And I would sit in her kitchen with her. She had a big pot belly stove that kept this old, oh, the house must have been an 1890 or turn of the century Victorian farmhouse. It was wonderful. And she was the most fascinating woman. I found her fascinating. And believe it or not, she did most of the talking. <laughs> And I just listened. And um, I think that's why I prefer um, uh, vi everything vintage, antiques and everything. All I did way before that anyway, even when I was a child. But, but I was like Ella. I enjoyed the wisdom and the experiences and everything else about uh, older women. I found them fascinating. So back to this. I always digress. Anyway, I'm gonna put this scarf on. It's made in Ireland. It's that Aran knit. Look at the beautiful um, pattern on it. And it's called a pocket scarf. And on both ends, it has these nice big deep pockets with beautiful buttons. 
and you can put your hands in there and keep them warm or you can put stuff in there and it's wide enough to keep your back and your shoulders warm and it's uh just i just love it I, i'll put the name of the catalog in the description below um just push that little um, arrow and you'll get to the description where it tells uh, what this video is all about. It also gives any items that I think you might be interested in getting and where I found them. And also my music that I love to put on. Um, my music is a subscription that I have to uh, Epidemic Sound. It's music that a lot of people on YouTube use. So, and that's why we can't use real music. We have to use um, music that's not copyrighted but let me let me stand up and show you this isn't this lovely look what you can do with this you can cross it look how it keeps your upper shoulders and your back warm and i'll back up and show you what it looks like on these pockets come to about the waist i'll move my chair for a minute here look isn't this lovely isn't this great i still have the tag on it but i wear it around the house it is made in Ireland and I just love it. Look what I can do with it too. I can, I can hug myself. Anyway, this is what I think I'll keep on or go put a sweatshirt on for the rest of the day. Moosey just went outside. Of course, he's been fascinated with the news and it was kind of hard to get him to turn the TV off so that I could do this. I like the light of the day, so I don't have to wait until the end of the day. But Moosey's a news guy, uh, but I did get him out because it's sunshiny. We're supposed to have a uh, nice weather today and tomorrow. What's today? Friday? Thursday? I lose track. And then we're in for another storm surge of a couple of days. And then after that, it's supposed to be nice. So I'm looking forward to that. I can't put any of my outdoor decorations away, my poinsettias, my wreaths, anything, because they're wet and they're damp. And if I put them in tubs, everything would mildew on me. So can't do that. You are looking so tweedy and so January-ish. Is this my right side? That's a good side. Ooh, look folks. <laughs> He says he needs a haircut. I love it. Turn sideways again like that. No, don't do that. Turn sideways. Look at all that nice gray hair he has. He wants it cut off. No way. I want to look like a boy again. So what are, what are you finding out here in this uh, January cold day right before a two-day storm surge? After like two years of rain, it seems, right? <laughs> Well, what I'm looking at is a very dead garden, yep. which is as it should be in the winter. Um, do you know that, that Matt and I did a buried uh, 150 bulbs? I didn't know it was that many. <laughs> in uh, about 10 tubs, and they're in the shed because we want to fake them out that it's still winter. And then along around the end of March, we put them into the garden we get all those beautiful, beautiful flowers. It's going to be great. Now, sitting here this afternoon, the first time I've been out with it's not raining on me, um, I ordered some more bulbs. Oh, boy. <laughs> you're those, getting like me. You, no, well, you're, these are the seeds. You're treasures. <laughs> the tre these are my, my, my treasures, the, uh, the ones that bloom in the spring. You plant in the spring and they bloom in the summer. That's your gladiolas dahlias, my uh, hyacinth, of course. Yep. Lilies. Lilies, yeah. It's going to be great. It's going to be good. Good. So we have a couple of months before all this happens. You'll help me when the time comes, won't you? Absolutely. you got to get your hands dirty. I do. Well, you know me. I could do that. Red nail polish or not. <laughs> it's getting cold out here. Yeah, I think I'll come in. Yeah. Bye. Bye. I'm checking my little list. I'm trying to be very organized. And by the way, in an, maybe the next or the next after, um, I'm going to talk something about that organization of my mind 
my home, my shed, everything, and um, my my YouTube channel. And um, I just always have so many things going in my head at one time. Um, I'm not organized. A lot of a lot of you people think I am, but but I really fly by the seat of my pants a lot of times. So. Oh, I know what I wanted to say. I'm going to put a couple of pictures on here of Mikey and his family as they enjoyed the medieval times show. Oh my goodness, they had front row seats at this big long table and they their meals were served to them on beautiful pewter plates and pewter mugs. Everything was by hand. You ate the chicken drumsticks and everything by hand, bread, chunks of bread. And the show was magnificent. You, they, There's a lot of audience participation in this. Medieval times, that's what I'm talking about in Orange County. It's an attraction that's been there for, for well, even when we moved down here in the early 70s, it was here. And um, they enjoyed it no end, especially Lizzie, who gets caught up in it. And by the way, one of the knights on horseback rode right up to her They were in the, the first row, which was up about 12 feet from the rodeo stadium uh, floor, and he threw her a white rose. And oh my goodness, was she thrilled. She was cheering when her knight fell off his horse and she broke into tears. And there was a video that Sabrina sent me of Lizzie actually crying. I mean, spontaneously. So anyway, you might enjoy some of these pictures. And also our little Annie, we had a lot of birthdays. We still do in January. And little Annie, Molly's little girl, Dubby's little granddaughter, Annie, turned one beautiful little baby. And there's a cute picture of her that I'm going to show you in her ball pen. It's a whole bunch of pink and red and white balls in a big round tub. And the baby sits in the middle and plays with all these balls. And it's the cutest thing to give to someone as a gift. Dubby gave it to her for Christmas. And I'll, I'll put her little birthday picture on too. She even has heart jammies on. In this short little reel, I am going to take you on a very exclusive tour of my shed where I keep most of my things. As you know, we live in a 90 year old, tiny, tiny adobe cottage, which we love but there's no storage for a maximalist, avid collector of treasures. Moosey calls them stuff. Well, that's my new ode to red. Um, <laughs> and it was a another chatty video. Thank you all so much for watching, for enjoying, for talking back to me. You know, the last video I said, I talk so much that I, I'm the only one. We're friends and we're buddies, but I'm the one doing all the talking. But a lot of you said, oh no, Nanny, you'd be surprised what we say to our iPads and computers. So I'm glad you talked back. Until our next video, I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, a lot of red, and we're back to red again, which I kind of like anyway. I'm getting used to the red. Love to you all, and God bless us all, too. Mm -hmm.